I, I think it's kind of way behind for silver to play out yeah. the same pattern. Silver, silver needs to rally all up, up to here. That's where gold is equivalent to trading right now. It's hitting right. its hundred percent measured move. So we're a long ways from there. It, it could go up here, chop around, and mm -hmm. pull back, take a pause, and then and then take a run up. But this overall pattern, like we've had a nice run up, it's consolidating. It's take. It does have potential that we could get some screaming, you know, move in in silver, and it maybe wants to run up to forty one, forty two. I mean, obviously, we don't know. The chart pattern is actually still bullish. It's very bullish for gold. In today's episode, Chris Vermoylan predicts that while gold has had an impressive run this year, the rally may be nearing its peak. He points out that gold has reached a critical technical level, hitting its 100% measured move, which he has long anticipated. This suggests that gold may soon pull back, especially after such a sustained rally. However, he notes that in the event of geopolitical turmoil, such as a major escalation in the Middle East, gold could see another sharp rise as investors flock to safe havens. Silver, on the other hand, might still have some room to run. Mullen believes that silver could push higher in the short term, possibly reaching the $34 to $36 range. He also highlights silver's volatility, explaining that it tends to follow gold's movements, but often lags behind. While silver has been slower to rally compared to gold, he sees potential for further gains if market conditions worsen or if there's a surge in speculative buying. Looking ahead, Mullen cautions that while precious metals have performed well, a healthy pullback could occur, especially if market sentiment stabilizes. However, he remains optimistic about the long-term outlook for both gold and silver, suggesting that after any near-term corrections, these metals could begin a new multi-year bull run, with gold potentially reaching three thousand dollars or more and silver eventually following suit now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview with craig hemke but first hit the like button smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily videos enjoy the episode yeah i think i think gold is, has definitely run its course in terms of some some pretty big moves like when we look at this chart obviously we've seen it pull back a little bit i i think there's a shift in assets right now a little bit I, we're seeing money flowing back into equities it's coming out of the risk the risk off plays like gold and utilities are pulling back a bit uh, uh, but when we take a look at the the monthly chart since this is the monthly projection you know we've been looking at this price action for a very long time now this is going all the way back to early early 2000 here using the Fibonacci extension this is something I've been talking about uh, for years as we had the rally up into the 2011 peak. We had the pullback in 2015. And if we carry that forward, we are right up to this 100% measured move. And the way that I use Fibonacci extension is when price runs up to this 618 level, if you have a pause at that level, then we almost always go up and hit this 100% measured move. One stands for 100% of this move is 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 there, there's 61 percent and then there's a full hundred percent and so that's where we've at we pretty much tagged that and i've been saying when gold gets to this particular level this is like you know a 15 year chart pattern a super cycle pattern maybe gold doesn't have a whole lot of upside for a little bit i do think we're going to get into a bit of a pullback in the markets I think silver has maybe a little bit more upside. If we have like bombs getting dropped in the Middle East or something like that, we might see gold and oil and precious metals shoot higher as kind of a black swan event. But overall, the momentum has hit that that phase. And as you and I talked about last month, this big rally in gold, the whole world kind of moving into it because they're worried about falling, other assets falling in value, whether it's equities or uh, currencies, things like that. It's very similar to what we saw in 2007, just before we went into a financial crisis where gold pulled back. So a pullback from here is is actually very healthy for gold. After that, we start into a <clears throat> excuse me a new multi year run in gold, where we be looking way up in the three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollar range. So um, the big question is like, how much does it pull back? And yeah. do we have the like, you know, a, a third World War Three kind of break out here or is it still just going to continue to be, you know, talks and 
all that stuff. So there, there's kind of a lot going on. Uh, and I think most of the upside is done temporarily for the precious metal space. This is still the monthly chart, but it, you know, both patterns from the low up to this recent high and a few years ago and back down, it came right up here. We had three months where it flirted around that 618 and now we've hit the 100% measured move. So this is going like a 15 year time frame, and also like, you know, a, a 10 year time frame, and both of them are at this point. So to me, this is like a huge inflection point. The only reason I think gold continues to go higher is if we have like you know, something crazy in the Middle East or, you know, um, war crack out in a much more deadly way, uh, I think that would spike it up. But overall, I mean, this is to me, uh, you know, a, a, a warning sign that I think the economy, the stock market is very close because when gold tops out, that's typically when we're going to see the rest of the market and the economy slowly start to top out uh, right after it. In today's news recap, silver prices near multi-year high as gold approaches record levels. Silver prices are rallying sharply on Wednesday, approaching the multi-year high of $32.96 reached on October 4th. A breakthrough above this level could trigger a rapid ascent towards the next significant resistance at $34.35. Both silver and gold are benefiting from a risk-off sentiment in the market. Gold is trading near its all-time high of $2,685.64. With the current session high at $2,682.88. The precious metals market is finding support from weakening equities and declining bond yields. Traders are closely monitoring upcoming U.S. economic data releases, including retail sales, industrial production, and weekly jobless claims. These reports will provide crucial insights into the Federal Reserve's potential timeline for interest rate cuts. San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank President Mary Daly has indicated that the central bank remains on track for rate reductions this year, assuming economic data aligns with expectations. Delegates at the London Bullion Market Association's annual gathering have forecasted a substantial increase in precious metal prices over the next 12 months. They predict gold will rise to $2,950 and silver will surge to $45 per ounce, representing significant upside potential from current levels. Now, we'll show you more clips of the latest interview, but first, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode. Silver's got a pretty ugly chart. We, we could try drawing the same levels. It obviously had this massive, huge rally up and it came all the way back down. If, if we carry that, which it's hard to say, like, do we use the COVID spike low? I would probably go with this level around. Yeah, I'd go with that one. Yeah, it's kind of more of the legit kind of level. Um, it, it, it shows silver has a, obviously a ton of upside. I don't think it's going to happen right away. But if you look at this upside from where we are, I think this upward target, that's 93% in, in value. I think that'll probably happen after we have some market correction. So I am thinking, you know, silver might still squeeze up into this uh, 34, maybe 36 range, which are right into these highs here. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has a little bit more potential for a kind of a last minute, you know, in the last, next month or two, maybe a pop and squeeze up. But I do feel like it'll probably pull back. And then once that pullback is done, then I think it's an easy $60 an ounce, probably a whole lot higher. And it could run for years and years along with gold. And, and this will be the exciting time. When you and I are talking, you know, several months from now, and probably the financial systems had some type of reset, some type of black swan has happened or defaults or whatever. Uh, you know, when we get into this phase, this is going to be really exciting because this is when the miners should start to really come to life and support things. Like silver is not backing up what gold is doing. Gold right. miners, if we look at GDX, uh, is not backing up what gold is doing. I mean, silver and miners are floundering. They should be screaming to new all-time highs, but they're not. And that's a huge warning sign that this is just a one commodity rally. Like gold is the global defensive play for people. And so that's where people are going. They're not piling in for huge speculative gains right now. People are going there to preserve capital because they're scared. They're not looking to swing for the fences. But when silver and miners start to outperform probably sometimes late next year, hopefully, uh, that will be like our, our early sign saying, okay, 
we're starting to see speculative money move in. The markets have had a reset. Things are revalued. Uh, so there'll be a really exciting time when that happens. But uh, I still think there's quite a bit of damage and a lot of chaos to, to happen between then and now. I, I think it's kind of way behind. For silver to play out yeah. the same pattern, silver silver needs to rally all up up to here. That's where gold is equivalent to trading right now. It's hitting right. its 100% measured move. So we're a long ways from there. But uh, stall so, first. You know, but this it pattern. Would, it would go up and stall first at the 61% like gold did back in April. Yeah, it, it could go up here, chop around and mm -hmm. pull back, take a pause and then and then take a run up. But this overall pattern, like we've had a nice run up, it's consolidating, it's take it does have potential that we could get some screaming, you know, move in, in silver and it maybe wants to run up to 41, 42. I mean, obviously we don't know. The chart pattern is actually still bullish. It's very bullish for gold. If we look at gold and silver, they are in strong uptrends, they have bull flag patterns. The only reason I'm bearish is simply on gold specifically is because there's multiple time frames. There's even, I think, a shorter time frame. We did like the 15 year, we did like the five year. I think you can go to a shorter one and they all come to the same price level. So yeah. to me, gold yeah. is just saying it's run out of steam, but silver has a funny way how it moves. Sometimes it'll move way after uh, gold has and people move into it to try and catch that move. So, uh, you know, there there is potential. This is a nice bull flag. Silver has that chart pattern where it could pop and rally very quickly here and um and tag that 618 and from there it could pull back and then you know when the new bull market starts you know it could go up to this 5960 level uh, so things could totally still play out for silver but silver is definitely a much more wild beast and uh, it's more of a speculative emotional swinging just simply because it moves percentage wise a lot it makes everybody very emotional when something swings 15 20 percent fairly quickly i i think oil is it's going to have a big breakdown. Um, you know, we've, we've had this recent bounce with the Middle East, a pretty strong bounce, but it's a news driven move. When we look at oil, I mean, this year is one ugly chart. This is not a, a friendly chart to, to generally trade. If we look at the big picture uh, and zoom out a little bit here, uh, we can see the chart pattern that forms. We have more or less a, a double top. It has sold off. It's Con consolidating, taking a, a breather. It's trying to find support right across this area. It has found support, but if this breaks, then then we're heading down to the 50s or the 40 range uh, fairly quickly. And um, that to me, you know, that's where I think oil keeps wanting to go. It keeps kind of getting bought back up. Some type of news hits or something and it drives it back up. You know, a lot of people think, uh, it, you know, the markets are manipulated and you kind of wonder, like every time that we see oil get down to this level, something comes out about OPEC or something and it quickly pops price back up. Eventually, prices, I think, is going to break down. And then once it starts this slide, I mean, there's going to be a lot of unwinding, a lot of selling going on. And um, I think it's going to lead to give us the, an early warning that a recession is coming or maybe we need recession news first where we, finally the news says we are officially in a U.S. recession. And then people are going to be like, oh, crap, everything's coming to a halt yeah. and slowing down. Oil is going to fall. There's going to be less demand, less travel and products needing needing it. So uh, I'm pretty bearish on oil. Um, I think it's going to have a, quite a, a landslide here. What do you think of Chris Take? Do you agree with his prediction that gold might be topping out? Do you think silver will surge to $50? Post in the comments section down below your honest opinion and share with the stackers your price prediction for precious metals for the end of the year. Thanks for watching. Now check this video right here because it's a perfect fit for you. I'll see you on the other side.